Things aren't looking good for Theresa May, are they? Well, it actually could be worse for Theresa May. I know it looks terrible at the moment, but she might survive this uh, uh, vote of no confidence tonight for the simple reason is that there's nobody really within the Conservative Party who would like to take her place because she is facing an impossible task. Uh, the crux of the matter here is that many of her backbenchers and pro-Brexit supporters say the agreement that she has struck with Brussels doesn't go far enough and it's keeping the UK effectively within the European Union and under EU rules. And the bone of contention is the famous backstop, which they say... Uh, leaves too much control uh, in Brussels and there is no effective date when this backstop should end if it ever comes into effect after the transition period comes to an end if there is no agreement on trade with the EU. So Theresa May is facing this vote of no confidence. This is the second time that there has been an, a, a, an attempt to have a vote of no confidence. The last time round, the 48 letters necessary didn't materialise. This time round, there are 48 letters. It depends how... MPs are going to vote tonight. If they vote massively in favour of her <laughs> leaving, she's going to find it very difficult afterwards to continue as Prime Minister, although she will do. Uh, if she gets a large vote in her favour, then she uh, will steam ahead and carry on with the deal and then therefore try to rearrange it with the EU and maybe have a second vote before the 21st of January, which is the, uh, the deadline for that, and then push it through uh, Brexit on the 29th of March uh, as scheduled. At the moment, all of that remains particularly unclear. We'll have to wait and see about the outcome tonight, but my feeling is she might survive this vote. Um, now, we have 158 Conservative lawmakers, according to Reuters, who have come out and publicly supported Theresa May. This obviously means nothing because that vote, as you said, is secret. Uh, I want to ask you about Boris Johnson because he's been someone who's been gunning for uh, Theresa May's job. He's in favour of a hard Brexit. So, in essence, if, if he becomes the next prime minister, he doesn't care if he has not enough time to renegotiate the Brexit deal. Well, Theresa May has just been through Prime Minister's Question Time and uh, in, in the House of Commons, the, the British Parliament, and she has been quite categorical that her deal is the only deal and that whoever takes over the, the job of prime minister, if she is to lose that job and be replaced, will have the same problem trying to strike a deal with the EU. And this is going to delay everything. They will have no other option but to, to delay Article 50. That's the date when Britain leaves the EU on the 29th of, of uh, March. March next year. And uh, that means there might not even be a Brexit at all. So she's saying, don't think that if anybody else takes over from me, they're going to find it any easier to strike a deal with the EU because the EU has said there will be no new negotiations. The only thing that the EU might be open to is, as I just said, finding com some kind of agreement on when the famous back stop is going to end. So if Boris Johnson gets the job, I don't think he will because he doesn't have the support within the Conservative Party to get that job. But if by some miracle for Boris Johnson he gets that job, I don't think he's going to find it any easier to negotiate a, a deal with the with the EU than the one that uh, Theresa May has struck. Indeed. We'll